basahin natin ang two key verses po para sa mensahe ngayong umaga nito. Psalms 46 verse 10, pwede rin po natin basahin dito. Sa screen, he says, ay, pwede ko pa magsitayin muna tayong lahat para po sa paggalang ng salita ng Panginoon. So, Psalms 46 verse 10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then, yung second verse po natin, Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God po sa salita ng Panginoon, makakaupo na po tayo muli. Ang ating pong topic na yung nalang ito is very, very applicable po. Overcoming distractions. Every day po ng buhay natin, ayan, katulad yan, mga glitches, distraction po yan, nararanasan po natin na na-out of focus ka. Sino po dito yung Ah, uh, nagluluto ka. Tapos biglang tumunog yung cellphone mo, may tumatawa. Tapos babalikan mo yung pupuntahan mo yung cellphone mo, yung pala, wrong number siya. <laughs> eh, nagluluto ka, alam mo yun. So, parang, yun saan, kami po sa bahay, may second floor. So, yung landline namin, pag nag-ring, bababa ka pa. Tapos pag sinagot mo, wrong number pa lang. <laughs> so, alam niyo mga ganong distractions. Eh, what if may ginagawa ka o natutulog ka? Akala mo, emergency. Diba? So, naranasan po ba natin yung mga gano'n na parang nagpo-focus tayo, busy tayo sa isang bagay, pero mamaya-maya mayroong mga susundot-sundot na mga distraction nga po. Ang Tagalog ng distraction ay, ano nga ang Tagalog nito? Sino po ang nakakaalam? <laughs> Nina. Storbo. <laughs> Correct. Yung bang nasa sidetrack ka, alam niyo yun? Yung na, nawawala ka dun sa goal mo, dun sa ini-aim mo na gawin. Di ba, misa sabihin nyo, ako, kakapusin ko tong trabaho ko. Kailangan mapuntahan ko si ganito, si kumari, ganyan. Kailangan magmasingil ko si ganito kasi, yung bawa, yun ang trabaho mo. Ito yung mga gagawin ko sa buong araw na to. Tapos parang biglang may mangyari na, ay, matitiskaril ka ba? <laughs> dun sa naging itinerary mo. Hindi lang po sa gano'n, halimbawa, nagpo-pray ka, tapos biglang may katawag sa mo, or biglang uh, may mag-iingay sa kapitbahay, may bibidjoking, <laughs> na ang lakas-lakas. Tarang naaanong, nadidistract. So, do you sometimes find it hard to stay focused and not get distracted? Mahirap po ba yung mag-stay na focus? Nahihirapan po ba tayo nun? Yung bang, Madali tayong madistract. May mga ganun po kasi na madaling madistract. Pero may iba naman na talagang kahit ano, ipukay po kami ni Ate Sills kanina. Si Eunice, dahil ka kapag totoo niya, <laughs> yung example ko na angay, ngayon lang to, ano, naisip ko. Na kahit daw nagkakagulo silang magkakapag-anak, si Eunice nagbabasa pa rin sa gilid, nag-aakal. <laughs> Hindi siya naiistorbo. Sabihin, focus po siya. Well, hindi lahat ko ganun. Hindi rin ako ganun. <laughs> Nung nag-aaral ako, madali ako masahitra. Lalo na po yung mga girls. Ayun ko, wiring po kasi ito ng brain ng babae. Na, ano tayo, marunong tayo pag multitasking. Alam niyo po ba yung multitasking? Yung kaya natin gawin, ang maraming bagay, all at the same time. Ay, may iniisip ka pang iba. Parang ganun. Diba? Parang ganun po ang mga nanay. Yung karamihan na nagduduto mamaya-maya. Uh, mag-aalaga ng bata, nagtatrabaho. Ayan, si Sterica, example, talagang ano siya. Masasabi ko po na talagang multitasking. At ang mga lalaki naman po, iba yung wiring ng brain nila. Ewan ko po kung totoo, correct me if I'm wrong. Ang mga lalaki daw po is parang they can only focus uh, at one task at a time or one thought at a time. Kasi parang may mga boxes sila. So parang pag ito yung box na pinipili nila for at this moment, ito lang ang iniisip nila. 
Hindi katulad po ng mga, totoo po ba yun? Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung totoo yun sa mga lalaki. Pero hindi katulad ng mga babae na simultaneous po lahat, nag-grocery yan, pero inaalala niya yung bill ng oriente. <laughs> inaalala niya yung anak niya sa school kung nakauwi na ba. Alam niyo ba yun? Lahat yun simultaneous nangyayari. Pero yun nga po, overcoming distractions. Kasi ito po ay napapanahon sa ating lahat, especially now, na with all the technology and everything, everything is accessible, everything makakatch po yung attention natin. ba? Diba? Kasi andyan lahat. Sabi nga eh, unfortunately, we live in a world today where it is becoming easier and easier to be distracted in general. Even those who consider themselves to be very disciplined are not immune. And Christians are not immune either. So we are faced daily with distractions that make us confused and make us unwise sometimes. We, we make poor decisions when distractions are not dealt with wisely. Ang distraction po ay normal. Kasi andito tayo, di ba? Sa mundo nito. Hindi po kasalanan yung nadidistract tayo. Ang kaisalanan lang, o ano na, parang natin ihahandle itong distraction na to. Kasi distraction is everywhere. Una-una, kaaway, -una, hindi distract tayo yan. Lalo na sa paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon. Pero, kung paano natin siya i-combat yung distraction na to, paano natin siya ihahandle? Doon po nagkakasalo. So, as Christians, if we are going to be successful in our walk with God, and in accomplishing our goals, we must learn how to overcome distractions and stay focused in the midst of a distracting world. So, paano po? Ano po ba muna ang distractions? Ang definition po ng distraction is something that directs one's attention away from something else. Simply put, distractions are meant to shift our focus. So, yun po ang distraction, di ba? Meron kang ginagawa mo yun. Nag-aarap ka, halimbawa, bigla kang tinawag ng kabarkada mo, o, oh, lamot tayo, nood tayo ng ganito. Distraction yun, na nang ganyan. Or, halimbawa, kami mo maaga kong uuwi. Pero yung mga katrabaho mo, bigla kang nayaya. Ganyan. So, mga iba't ibang klase po yan, nalagalanasan natin in our daily living. And it's normal. Kakaiba po ng distraction yung inspiration. Sa tingin nyo, ano po ang pagkakaiba? Yung distraction is an negative side, di ba? Nadidistract ka, nawawala ka dun sa focus mo. The inspiration naman, it's something na it makes you more, uh, to be more creative, for example. Na-inspire ka. Na-inspire ka sa isang taong to. O na-inspire ka sa salita ng Panginoon at nag-propel sa'yo to to serve more. So, iba po yun na, yun yung pinagkaiba nila. Distraction versus inspiration. So, distractions can come from all angles in ways we least expect. From people we don't expect. At times, we aren't expecting at all. And they can end up costing, costing us time, happiness, peace, relationships, money, and success. According to the picture, the mirror of God. So it can come from all sorts of forms, all sorts of angles, from various places that we don't expect. At times, that we don't expect. Of course, hindi natin din expect, kasi nga kaya nga siya nag kaya nga na distract. Hindi mo yun din expect. It just came upon you suddenly. Okay. So what does the Bible say about distractions? Distractions from everyday work, goals, and life in general can be frustrating and can even cause major setbacks. However, things that distract us from God can be extremely dangerous. And as Christians, we, when we start to lose sight of God, His Word, and His plan for our lives, it can lead us in the wrong direction. Towards Sin, 
missed opportunities, missed blessings, and discipline from God. Losing sight of God also causes us to live in fear, anger, worry, frustration, and doubt. So yun po ang mga effects pag nadidistract tayo. When we lose sight of God and in His Word. So what are the four main things considered as distractions in the Bible? Ito po, carnal things of this world. When we say carnal things, ito po yung things of this world. Customs and behavior of this world. Our fleshly desires, for example, food, clothing, lust, greed, violence. We are surrounded by the internet world. Alam na alam po natin yan. Television, social media everywhere. And cell phones. Di ba po, nung panahon noon, nung kabataan namin, wala pa po pong mga cell phone. Siyempre, wala namang mga internet. And simple lang po ang buhay. Uh, so kami ng school, <laughs> ng minsan half day, whole day, pagka high school na, pag ng bahay, merienda, tapos gawa ng homework. Tapos pagdating ng mga alas 7, nanood-nood ng konting TV. Kasi ilan lang po ang channel noon. Wala pa ng mga cables noon, di ba? Anong nanood ka ng channel 2, 4, 7, 9, saka 13. Parang yun lang po yung mga programa noon eh. Tapos pag na-miss mo yun, yung mga kukurit yung panoorin, di ba na mababalikan? Unless i-replay siya nung station. And pagdating po ng mga 10, parang ano na po yan, news. Eh, usually, pagbata naman, hindi naman nanonood ng news. Tsaka, antok na po, maaga kasi papasok. So, pagdating ng 11, magbabayang magiliw na yan. <laughs> magbabayang magiliw na yan. At mamaya, puro bars na lang yung makikita mo sa, sa TV. Wala na. Kailangan mo nang matulog. Ganun po no. Pero ngayon po, iba na. Alam naman natin, ang mga bata ngayon, makikita ko minsan. No? <laughs> Alam naman, naka-night shift pa ako. Kasi yun yung mga naka-online. Alas dos na madaling araw, ganyan. Sabi ko, nakutulog pa ba ng mga bata? <laughs> Kasi nga po, because of the internet, social media, di ba? At, uh, bawa, meron tayo, wala naman tayong plan ng bumili ng kortina, di ba, mga sa bahay. Eh, napacheck in tayo sa Shopee. <laughs> o kaya, sana-sana. Ganyan. Eh, promotion. <laughs> so, tapos mamaya, ang dahil mo nang naano, Ganyan-ganyan pa, nakabili ka na na. <laughs> Nabibili ng mga nanay dyan. Nakabili ka na na kung anik-anik. Wala naman din sa budget na add to cart mo na. <laughs> Ako po add to cart mo na add to cart mo na check out. <laughs> Pero yun nga po, nadidistract ka. Halimbawa, nasa mall ka. Diba? Ang ganda-ganda ng mga paligid. Nabunta ka sa Watson. Ayan, yung mga... Sino po madala sa Watson? Ang dami rin po magbibili kasi doon eh. So... Wala ka na dun sa dapat mong budget, di ba? So, pagdating mo ng bahay, ano ko mga pinumili ko? Hindi ko naman to yung schedule na binin, hindi ko naman to binudget, ganyan. So, yun mo yung mga carnal things of this world, you know? Uh, it, it surrounds us everywhere. Sabi nga, hindi lang po doon yung job natin. Uh, ngayon, ang, dati po kasi ang talagang trabaho, Monday to Friday lang, eh. Ngayon, with, with the rising of the BPO's, talagang nag po talaga yung shift ng, uh, ng environment natin when it comes to job opportunities. At dahil po dyan, nag-adapt tayo dyan. Yung mga relationships po natin, uh, especially mga unhealthy relationships, carnal things po yun. When I say unhealthy relationships, uh, yun po yung mga relationships na hindi kalaoban ng mga Alam naman po natin kung ano-ano yan. Yung mga hobbies natin na baba pag we play ng mga online games na pinaabot na tayo ng ilang oras. Madaling araw na, lalo na nung nauso at tayo mga mobile legends na mga ganyan para may mga nagkakasakit na ang mga bata. So, yeah, those are carnal things in this world. And this has become uh, things that distract distract us spiritually. Like unbelievers, we often end up not only adapting the ways of the world, but literally chasing after them. So parang hindi lang natin na-adapt, pati tayo, minsan, papasabay na 
unknowingly kasi na-influence na tayo. So parang we look for fame, fortune, social influence, attention, which in turn draws us further away from God. Sabi nga ko sa John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, and do not love the world for, or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God goes right. And in James 1, 14 to 15, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. So yun po yung effect uh, when we get swayed by the carnal things of the sin. Pangalawa po, na considered distraction, sabi ng Biblia ay our thoughts. Yan. All the craziness can, that can sometimes go in our heads. Unfortunately, we can't control every thought that comes to our minds. However, we can control what we do with the thoughts once they surface. Kuha ba natin po yun? Hindi daw po natin, siyempre, namisa naiisip, bigla naiisip, di ba? I-inject din sa atin ng kaawa yan. Bigla mong may naisip na ganito. Nalala mo yung sama ng loob mo sa ganito. Kaibigan mo, alam mo yun? Or, ah, pinaggawa na ako dito ng ganito. Alam mo yun, basta bigla na lang siyang, ano, misa may nag-trigger din kasi po. May nakita ka na alala mo yung ganun. However, makakontrol natin kung anong gagawin natin. Once we, that thought comes to our, to our mind. So, hindi natin minsan wala, iwasan yun, naalala natin, tapos, o kaya uh, nag, naging depressed tayo, for example, nag, nag self pity tayo. Those are thoughts that are not from the Lord, di ba? Hindi, ta, hindi kalooban sa atin ng Panginoon na nag self pity tayo. Pero once we realize na, ah, nararamdaman ko na naman ito, uh, hindi ito sa Panginoon, Kailangan, we will be able to handle it properly. Yun ang makakontrol natin. Yung pag-iisip. Yung thought na yun. So as Christians, we should always redirect our mindset toward things that glorify God. So lagi po tayong aware dapat. Um, hindi po madali yun na gawin na once we come to this thought, tapos kailangan mawala agad. No, kailangan po talaga Ibalik natin sa Panginoon, mag-pray natin. Kasi yun lang po yung makakapagpawala na. Kaya minsan yung thought na ginawa na ako na masama niya ang kailangan madapayan. Parang gano'n. <laughs> Madapasan na. Parang gano'n. May mga bata gano'n, di ba? Pero hindi po yung dalawa ng Panginoon para sa atin. At tulad po nitong, yeah, speaking about social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. TikTok. Um, familiar naman po tayo lahat dito sa mga apps na to. And sometimes you get carried away when you see something na funny, for example. Ah, natatawa ko. Tapos may repost mo. Pero hindi mo napansin na may mura pala doon. May bad word dyan. Ganun. Alam niyo ba yun? Diba? Misan yung mismo tanganan ng page ay hindi hindi maganda. You know, it's a bad word, it's a foul word. So, dun po sa mga ganyang pagkakataon na nire-remind tayo, huwag <laughs> tayong post ng post. Think before you click. Yes? Think before you click. Kasi once it's there, it's there. And it represents you. Um, you are what you post on social media. Hindi po tayo pwedeng magtako na hindi naman ako yan ni, hindi may post ko lang. But the fact, it appears on your wall and your wall is your identity. It represents you. And ano po ba yung identity na dapat nare-reflect natin sa social media? 
we are Christians. We represent the Lord. Alam niyo po ba, sa mga employers, kaya ito message din sa mga kabataan, um, lagi pong yung mga employers in search ko ang FB account natin. And some, most of the time, tinatanong pa nila, ano ang FB account mo? Titignan po nila yun. Titignan nila yun, ano yung mga pinapost mo doon? Ito ba yung uh, nag-run doon sa Facebook? Do you blame people? Kasi po, syempre, paano ka nila tatanggap eh? Kung ganun yung nire-represent mo na attitude, definitely, you will also do the same when you're in the company. So, be careful po uh, sa pag-post sa social media. Be careful sa mga videos na ina-upload natin, especially TikTok. It's very, very alarming that some of the Christians are posting videos dancing at ang damit ay revealing. So, hindi po iyon kalooban ng Panginoon. Hindi po masama ang TikTok. It's a medium to communicate. It's a medium to provide information. May mga videos po dyan na cooking or mga very facial na knowledge sharing. So, yun po, doon natin siya i-utilize, yung mga ganun. Pero, pagka tinapit tayo ng Lord, ah, parang hindi, hindi yun anak, ano, ah, proper. So, huwag na natin gawin. Okay, we must be consciously talaga aware of what we post on social media. Next po, other people. Ayan po. Sige. Support po na sa verse ay Philippians 4.8 Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lofty, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Ganyan po yan sa salita ng okay, Next po, yung other people. Sometimes we allow what people think about us. And the approval we seek from them to distract us. In this case, we should work to adapt the mindset that the Apostle Paul had. Uh, in Galatians 1.10, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of God. Um, Ito po ay minsan din natin naiwasan no? sa family, sa mga kaibigan. Uh, limbawa, mga barkada na um, after ng work, gusto lumabas or sa office. Uh, ito po kasi naranasan. And, and their way of having fun is drinking. So, magbaba kung bago ka pa lang sa kumpanya, eh, minsan makikisama ka. Parang sabihin, ah, hindi naman nakikisama, hindi ka belong. Lalo na kung andun ang boss mo. Ano. So what will you do? Will you, will you stand up for your faith? Christian um, faith natin na, ah, we don't drink. We don't smoke. Uh, sometimes you can do it very, very gently naman. For example, uh, pwede ka naman magsabi na, Hindi mo naman, huwag naman yung, ah, mga kasalanan kayo. <laughs> di, hindi na kayo mapasok sa kalamitan dahil nag-iinom ko. Hindi naman po. Um, kailangan makita pa rin sa atin yung love. So, pwede naman, okay na tayo na maaga. Diba? Or, kung sakaling hindi talaga tayo pwede umalis dun sa lugar na yun, talagang, bawa ka, ang pani talaga rin. Huwag ka nalang uminom. Diba? Mag-juice ka nalang. <laughs> or ice tea. Para hindi, ano ka man, pero hindi ka naman nakikiparticipate ka lang. So, ano mang ginagawa nila. And, learn to discern what is of God versus of men. Our loyalty should be to God alone. Alam niyo po, pag nanindigan tayo sa, sa Panginoon, hindi natin, at we don't mind what other people will say just because we follow the Lord. 
the Lord will be with us. Tayo ang majority. Naalala ko yan, lagi sinasabi ni Pastor Papa noon, na kahit mag-isa ka lang, basta man nanimindigan ka sa tama, ikaw pa rin ang majority. So when Paul wrote to the saints in church regarding marriage, ito naman po, distraction to, as in people, and now we're talking about people. Ito yung sinasabi naman ni Paul na kung, kung, kung pwede at kaya natin, uh, let us remain single para daw wala na tayong alalahan ni na pamilyang aalagaan. Ito po ang mga salita niya. Sabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 7.35, I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but, yet, but that you may live in a right way in undevoted, undivided devotion to the Lord. Because sometimes, this is a reality. Uh, family matters and responsibilities become hindrances when prioritized before God. So, yan po yung advice ni Paul, kung kalooban, kung, kung kalooban ng Lord na we remain uh, single, mas mainam po. Kasi sabi niya po to, salita niya to, ha? hindi po po salita. Kasi nga, sometimes it's really getting the way the, the family issues. Um, yung pag-aasawa po ay pinapadalanin mo po talaga yan. At sa kalooban ng Panginoon ay bibigyan po tayo ng Panginoon ng mabuting partner in life na who will be with us together serving the Lord. Amen? Amen. Sa so, yun po yung pinaka-ano talaga doon yung sabi. Na ang magiging katuwag natin na galing sa Panginoon ay makakasama natin na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. In that way, we will build a family na mag-raise tayo ng children that we also serve the Lord. Amen po ba? Kasi yun yung design ng Panginoon for our family that serves the Lord. Number four po, and this is the last for the sample of distractions, are our circumstances. We can easily get caught up in the trouble, pain, or misfortune we are experiencing that we lose sight of who God is and His sovereignty and power over our situations. Sabi nga po, um, yung mga troubles or struggles natin and trials should push us to depend more on God and not to be overcome by those trials at mag sa failure or turning away from God. Lahat naman po tayo nag-struggle, di ba? Lahat tayo may pagsubo. Pero dapat yung circumstances na yun ay mag sa atin na lalo dumipende sa Panginoon. Hindi yung nang na tayo at linain pa natin ang Panginoon dahil sa nangyayari sa atin. Who knows? May reason ng Lord. Bakit ka inaalaw? May purpose siya. Bakit ka inaalaw dun sa struggle na yun? There's always a purpose for the Lord. And all we have to do ay laging dumipende po sa Panginoon. Yun po ang dapat na ang reaction natin. Yun yung response natin. Okay? So, distraction in itself is not a sin, but may lead to sin when entertained. So, it is our decision to deliberately choose to defeat it. I defeat natin po yung distraction. I overcome natin yung distraction. So, we proceed now to how to overcome distraction. Number one is identify what distracts you and eliminate it. So, ibig sabihin po, start by identifying specifically what it is that distracts you. What is it that makes you unproductive and hinders you from your goals? Nabawa, nag-sudyante po kayo, hindi um, kayo makapag-focus sa pag-aaral, Tapos, medyo mababa ang grades. I-assess mo yung sarili nyo. Ano ba ang ginagawa mo? Evaluating yung situation nyo. Um, bakit na? Kasi po, ang problem, once identified, it's half solved. Ito po yung, ano eh, ito yung mga kaisipan, theory ng mga uh, successful people. Once na identify mo, ang hindi nag-distract sa'yo, 50% so net. Brother, yun siguro makaka-relate kasi engineers, yung yeah, Felix, yung mga engineers natin. 
TV ba yan? Baka nanonood ka na TV, Netflix, na binge watching, <laughs> uh, magana, laki na ng iBags, nagtag ng Netflix pa rin dahil tinatapos ng series na to, ganyan. Uh, or electronics ba yan? Uh, cell phone, social media, pwedeng yung significant other, uh, yung mga in a relationship, na chatting, ganyan. Or, pwede laziness. Siguro ang tamad ko lang talaga mag-aaral. <laughs> Kaya, ano, hindi ako nakakuha ng mataas. Ganyan. Or, may background noise. Uh, kapitbahay, nagbibidyote, mula alas is na umaga hanggang alas is na gabi. <laughs> pwede ba i-report yun? <laughs> Sa barangay. So, yun, i-identify po natin. O, baka gudong ka lang. Ganyan. Gudong ka lang. Tapos, minsan din mga kids. So, how to handle the kids, paano natin si tayo na ways, paano natin mag-take care sila na hindi makakahadlang kung ano man yung kailangan natin gawin. Yung mga sample ko na gano'n, or yung budget natin, tinakapos sa akin ba, baka shopping-shopping tayo online, ng matalas, gano'n, kain tayo ng kain sa libas, or online delivery. At least na po kasi talagang mag-order na yun ng food, di ba? Dati pagka gutom ka po sa katindahan, bili ka kay Aling Nena, <laughs> Hopia, Coke, ganyan. Ngayon, ang bilis na, di ba? Baya grab, putan, lalalang. So, i-identify natin yan. But the more important thing is, when it comes to spiritual growth, the Bible tells us that we simply need to get rid of wrong attitudes. So, for example, bitterness, uh, Anger, hatred, and forgiveness, hostility, resentment, unbelief, grudge, or fear. So, for example, um, sabi ko to be mo, nalulukot ako, nadadown ako, bakit? So, i-ano mo yun? I-assess mo yung sarili mo. Bakit parang alayo ko sa Panginoon? Ba't parang hindi ako makapag-connect sa Kanya? Kahit nag-worship naman ako every Sunday. Bakit? Yung mga kapatiran na pumuskus ng banal na spirito, bakit ako hindi? My thoughts are wandering. Probably may bitterness ka sa puso mo. May anger ka na hindi mo nare-resolve uh, sa kapatid, sa kapwa mo. Hindi ko kasi nag-operate ang Panginoon sa ganoon sitwasyon na nararamdaman natin. Kasi ang Panginoon, gusto niya i-surrender natin lahat yun sa Panginoon. Surrender sa Kanya. I-empty out natin yung self natin sa Panginoon. From there, He can fill us. Pag puno po tayo ng sarili natin, hindi talaga makapakas pa ang Panginoon. So we really have to empty out ourselves for the Lord to fill us. So yan po. Sa Ephesians 4.31 verse 32, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, Rolling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So, hindi ko maiiwasan na magkakaroon tayo ng interaction, di ba? Siyempre, ito pa tayo, isang pamilya, nagkakaroon ng friction, um, or halimbawa, sa ilang ba? Sa family itself, may mga argument. May mga hindi pagkakapare-pareho sa opinion, nagkakaroon ng friction, ng conflict. Pero ang maganda po dyan, pwede natin idulog po sa Panginoon eh. Let the Lord give us wisdom on how to resolve these conflicts. And dun po mga pasok yung humility. Na alam niyo ba yun, na kahit nga daw hindi ituturo ng Panginoon, no? kahit hindi ikaw yung nagkasala, ikaw pa rin yung Magpapatawad, ikaw pa rin yung lalapit sa kapatid mong iyon. Talagang para maipakita yung Christ ng image. And malalaman niyo po, once you have released those ill feelings, ang daan po ng pakiramdam. Amen po ba? Yung lalat ko muna, bahala na ang Lord. Hindi mo na siya hawak sa kamay mo. Nilat ko muna siya. And ang daan po ng pakiramdam. Kasi, Si Lord na ang bahala doon. Pinanta po natin, for the battle is the Lord's. Ibigay natin sa Panginoon, kahit yung mga nagpa-persecute sa atin. Bigay natin yan sa Panginoon. The Lord will fight for us. 
Number two po, change your environment. So, if you do sa mga um, tag natin ma-overcome, una pong environment na dito po ko, physical environment. Yung inistayan natin kung nasa man tayo. Making changes or adjustments to your current environment in order to make it a distraction-free zone. Sometimes it could literally mean going to a different place altogether in order to be more productive. For example, um, gusto nyong mag-devotion, di ba? Yung quiet time natin sa Panginoon. Pero wala tayong, uh, yun ba, nasa sala tayo, eh, andun sila lahat. So you have to really go to a secluded place, like a room, na kung saan mas makapag-focus ka sa pag-pray, sa pag-personal uh, devotion sa Panginoon. You really have to do that. Sabi nga din sa Mark 1.35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Kahit ng Panginoong Jesus po, pumunta siya sa isang lugar na makakapag-pray siya sa Diyos naman. So tayo din po, gawin natin itong example na, or kung, if you could go to other place, na tingin nyo, bawa sa park, Marami dyan eh. Dati din lang yung nagpo-post ng mga <laughs> places eh. Uh, kung kaya nyo, if you are able to do it, punta kayo sa nature, talaga mamamangha kayo sa katakilaan ng Panginoon. And from there, you can really praise them. All by yourself. Diba? Um, turning away from the noise of this room. Si Kuya Ovet po ay nagsuzoom. Kasi nagre-record siya ng mga lessons niya for his students at may times po talaga na nag-rent siya ng room sa isang uh, hotel or uh, condo for example para doon po siya mag-record kasi kung doon sa amin ay may mga background noises nga po yan dahil na sa mga kapitbahay dogs barking alam nyo minsan yung biglang uh, may kapahol na aso may mag-aaway ng pusa mga ganyan so <laughs> very very common po yan sa amin Kaya yun. Isa pong change your environment is people. Yung nakapaligid sa atin. Yung circle natin. So often, there are times you simply have to avoid certain people or relationships altogether. Especially if we know it would hinder our walk with God. Na gets you ba yun? Meron tayong mga, siguro dati-dating mga kaibigan na hindi pa tayo kristyano and yung kala-kala nila ay makamundo. Tayo bilang naging kristyan na, hindi na ganun. Hindi na ganun po yung kala-kala natin, di ba? Bilang na tayo ng Panginoon. Hindi na tayo walking in flesh. Hindi, walking in the spirit na. If we could really avoid them, it's not bad to not be in their company if ang magiging resulta naman ay magiging bad influence sa atin sa pag ilikod natin sa Panginoon sa pag lahat natin sa Panginoon Sabi nga po sa 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be misled Bad company corrupts good character I-assess po natin Ito mga kaibigan kong to Papalakas pa niya ako sa kanang palataya. O, ako yung nadadala niya ng mga ways of this world. We really have to evaluate kung nakakapagdala ba siya ng contribution sa spiritual life ko. Kung na parang hindi, uh, let us limit, set boundary dun sa relationships ko na gano'n. Those are unhealthy relationships. Mag-pray ko natin sila. Yun po ang maging response natin. Hindi natin sila husgahan ng Panginoon lang po yan. Pero, huwag tayong makisama sa mga ganun na gawin. We can lead them in prayer para sa Panginoon. At pag nakita mo nila yung naninindigan tayo sa kama, i-respect mo nila ang faith natin. Marami na po akong ganyan nakita mga tao na yung may mga kwentuhan sila mga kaibigan, mga very unwholesome na talks, sila-sila yun, nagkakatawa na sila. Pero pagka kailangan nila ng advice, they will go to you. 
Kasi alam nila eh, na maka-Diyos ka. Alam nila, Kristiyano ka. And they know that they can get a more substantial advice from you. Rather than yung mga friends na katamawa nila. Parang gano'n. Ito po sinasabi ni Pastor. Gano'n yung ipagdatao ni Pastor nung sa work. At totoo po yun. Huwag tayong matakot na manindigan sa pananampalataya natin. It's definitely the Lord is in our side. Okay? Number three, have a daily task list and set a goal. Ito po usually sa mga estudyante or sa mga nag-business or sa ating lahat po, siguro lahat naman tayo may mga pinagkakaabalahan. Um, maganda po naglilista tayo ng mga task natin na we would want to accomplish for the day, for tomorrow, for the whole week. Tapos focus tayo din sa goal. Ano ba yung gusto ko ma-achieve? So, in that way, when we list down the list of activities that you're going to do, mas guided po tayo. Mas mamiminimize natin yung mga unscheduled na mga activities. di ba? Kasi nakita mo na, ah, ito yung mga gagawin ko. Ito pala yung kailangan ko ma-accomplish. So, it is, vice, it is advisable if you want to truly stay on task and accomplish your goals. So, mag-create ng post-its, ng books, planners, mga ganyan, mga vision boards, ganyan. Pwede po yun. Sabi nga sa Colossians 3.23, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. So when you work at something with all your heart, as if working for God, that includes putting in some effort every day to get to that goal. So realize, of course you have this list of tasks. Realize that you can conquer everything in a day. So huwag naman pong lahat yung isang araw kailangan mong gawin lahat. It helps to break things down into smaller, more attainable daily tasks. Tackle hard tasks first, yung mga mahihirap. Just always set a time limit or deadline. Kailangan po time bound. Hindi yung kung kailan na lang. So, kailangan binibigyan natin ng deadline yung sarili natin. And reaffirm your goals daily. Every day, kung meron pa tayong goal, if you decide on what we are aiming for, we set up ourselves up to fail before we even get started. Alam niyo po, maraming tao na busy. Busy, busy, busy. Pero productive ba? So, never confuse being busy with being productive. We can fill our days looking busy by doing stuff that doesn't matter or is a waste of time. That's not productivity. However, a good solid hour of time focused on something that gets you closer to your goal is true productivity. Yung meron mo tayo na-achieve. Yung hindi lang busy. Okay? And number four po, beware of the devil. Ito, talagang mararanasan natin ito po. Uh, 1 Peter 5 to 8, Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Alam niyo po, ang diablo, ang talagang purpose niya, mag-distract talaga tayo. Lalo na sa pag-initod natin sa Panginoon. Wala naman siyang ibang mabuting plano para sa atin. Kundi matanggal tayo sa presensya ng Panginoon. Matanggal tayo sa pagdilingkod natin sa Panginoon. Yun lang naman talaga purpose niya. Wala nang iba. So, no matter what you set out to do, you can count on the devil to try his best to distract you from, be, from serving God. The Bible tells us to be alert for this very reason. If the devil can manage to distract us with temptations and problems, he will keep us from being productive and accomplishing what God wants us to do. Alam niyo po ba yun? Ganun po ang job daw eh. Nag-inject siya ng mga thoughts sa atin. Um, Nagkukos siya ng sickness, for example, para madistract ka. Nagkukos siya ng uh, ill feelings sa'yo. Nag-inject siya ng mga ganun para mag- Malungot ka, depressed ka. You know, depression is not from the Lord. And the Lord always tells us to rejoice in Him always. Diba? This is the day that the Lord has me that I will rejoice and be glad in Him. Yun, yun ang lagi nga sa atin ng Panginoon. No matter what our circumstances may be, we should be rejoicing. Dahil temporary lang naman po yan, mga pinagdadaanan natin. Kapitan po nang narinig natin sa ita kanina. Mag- Dilipas ang lahat, pero ang salita ng Panginoon ang magpapatuloy 
At hindi tayo taga rito. Hindi po tayo taga rito. Dumadaan lang tayo sa heaven po. Sa kaharian ng Panginoon tayo. Yung diretsyo. Kaya ang heaven po, talo na na yan eh. Tinalo na yan ng Panginoon. Tayo bilang anak ng Diyos, mananagumpay na po tayo. Amen? So ang heaven, wala po dapat lugar yan sa, sa isipan natin. If ever, let's just cast them out. Rebuke the work of the devil in Jesus' name. Aalis po na. Sabi nga po sa James 4 to 7, 4 verse 7, rather, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Iyan po natin, huwag natin bigyan ng kuha ng jablo. Sabi nga, yung door, uh, hindi lang, dapat nakalock, hindi lang nakasara. Kasi pag nakal, nakasara lang, tapos hindi naman nakalock, mamabubuksan pa rin, di ba? So let's just, Let's not give the devil an inch sa buhay natin. Wala po siyang karapatan. At wala siyang kumang sa buhay natin. And ito po yung pinakahuli, pinaka-importante sa lahat on how we can overcome distraction is stay focused on God. Yun po talaga. Meditate on God's Word. Feed on God's Word. Soak in the presence of God. Paano mo natin ito magagawa? Through constant prayer time. Yung pong kailangan ang Panginoon kasi is is just a prayer away. O, pa, kaibigan ko natin ng Lord. He's not just our Lord. He's not just our Savior. He's our friend. Nandaan ko natin yan. He has called us His friends. So let's practice the habit of having this conversation with God. Na parang talagang friend mo siya. You know, Abraham, Abraham, he was a friend of God. Kinakausap na niya ang Panginoon talaga. Ganun po, maging ganun tayo ka-close sa Panginoon. At, andyan po ang Panginoon, katabi natin. Yung pong personal daily devotion and quiet time, ay talaga pong kasama rin yan. Hindi po tayo lalago sa ating spiritual na buhay. Pwede tayo nagbabasa ng salita ng Panginoon. Hindi natin, hindi tayo nag-dwell sa Word of God by reading His Word sa Bible at nagsiset aside ng time to communicate. So we really need to have this personal daily devotion in order for the Lord to strengthen us and to battle out whatever the devil might throw at us. And then seek God through His Word. Seek God through His Word. Doon po natin masusuntungan ng Panginoon sa pagbabasa ng salita niya. Doon po ang presensya niya ay sasama sa atin. Number two, serve the Lord through church ministries and missions. Maging involved po tayo. Volunteer. Uh, ito po lagi panawagin natin, di ba? Serve with us. <laughs> hindi lang po sa worship team. Hindi lang sa media. Kundi sa lahat po ng department po. Actually, um, mga fellowship departments natin. Sa kids. Um, yung sa PSD, PGP, JHC. Lahat po. Everything na makakapaglikod tayo sa Panginoon. God will honor that. May magbalis-balis tayo, magdikit tayo po. Ang lahat po yung honor ng Panginoon. The Lord will use us kung ano po yung capability natin, kung ano yung talento na pinagkaloob sa atin ng Panginoon. Doon po niya tayo na alam niya. And magkaroon po tayo nitong maging available tayo lagi sa pagdilikod sa Panginoon. Because definitely, andun po yung pagpapala talaga ng Panginoon. Yung maging available tayo, always ready to serve the Lord. And Third, is learn from spiritual leaders and mentors. From their wisdom and spiritual journey and experience. Sa mga pastors natin, sa mga leaders and elders natin, sa mga kapatid po natin na nag, naging matagumpay din sa pinagdadaanan ng mga journey, let's learn from them. Let's talk to them. Let's reach out to them. Kailangan natin ng counseling. Kung, kung tayo mahiya na lumapit sa kanila. At they will gladly abide po na mag-share ng mga experiences. Kung paano naging matagumpay, kung paano napagdaanan ang mga pagsubok sa buhay itong ating mga kapatid na ito. Huwag po tayong mahiya na lumapit sa kanila. And from there, yun po, lalabot po tayo. Dilagay po sila ng Panginoon ang mga leaders natin, mga elders and pastors para po mapalakas ang bawat isa sa atin. And 
nga po, if you stay focused on God, the Godly meditation is isang is conversation with the Lord. As we read and think about His Word and seek to understand what He's saying and how it applies to our lives, the Holy Spirit guides our thoughts and questions. Without the Lord's presence with us, His Word guiding us and His Spirit helping us, we would be unable to live righteously in this world. Kung wala po yung gabay na banal na spirito, kung wala po yung salita ng Panginoon, hindi po natin kakayanin na lumakad ng matuwid dito sa mundong to. Kasi yun po yung power natin eh, salita ng Panginoon. Di ba? We have the weapon of warfare. We have the sword of the spirit. Yan po yung ipoproclaim natin. Yan po yung i-declare natin. Kasi yun po yung power natin. Without it, we are helpless. So lagi po natin dala-dala yan. If we are not listening to the Lord by meditating and reading His Word, we are missing His best for our lives. Just like the Israelites did when they refused to believe and obey Him. They lost the promised land. And they suffered 40 long years of wandering in the wilderness. Alala niyo ba yun? Mga Israelites naging itigas ulo, complaining. And because of that, they suffered 40 long years of wandering in the wilderness just because hindi sila nag-listen sa, sa voice of God. They follow their own hearts. You know, hindi po tama yung ano, statement na follow your heart, do what makes you happy. It's so self-centered. Do what makes God happy. Yun po. Ang tama. Yun po ang mga prinsipyo natin. Kasi, pagka, I will just do whatever I want. Setting aside the Lord. That's not pleasing the Lord. So do what pleases the Lord. And He will surely bless us. God's word is holy. It is His only eternal gift to every one of His children. He doesn't want us to think and live like the world around us. His plans for us are more wonderful, righteous, and fulfilling than anything the world can offer. That's why we must listen to the Lord. Let the scriptures sink into our hearts and let go of everything else that distracts us or hampers our ability to meditate on Him. Pero sabihin niyo po sa akin, paano kung na-distract ako, nagkasala ako? Namali ako ng decision sa buhay because of that distraction. Nangyayari po yan sa atin. Hindi po ako exempted dyan. Nangyayari din sa akin yan. Sabi nga eh, a distraction entertained, entertained once is a mistake. But a distraction entertained twice or more than that is already a decision. Gets you po? Pag na-distract ka at nagkamali ka for the first time, Ah, ayun, nagkamali. Pero yung pangalawang distraction, same, same thing, same distraction. Pangalawa na, pangatlo, pangapat, na-distract ka pa rin. It's already your decision. Kasi dapat natutunan dun sa una. But since we are still in this flesh, at halimbawa, malalit tayo sa Panginoon, talagang ma-entertain po natin yan. Lalo na the devil operates according to our weakness. Tandaan niyo po, ang Diablo, alam niya ang kahinaan natin. Kaya, pag nakita niyang mahina tayo, yan dyan niya tayo, ka-target niya. Kaya we really need the Word of God. We really need the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Holy Spirit, para hindi po tayo matalo, para magtagumpay tayo over this weakness. At ito nga po, Minsan, na-distract tayo, na-detour, sabi nga, di ba? Na-detour, nag-ligaw. Um, it's okay. At some one point or another, all of us are going to, be, to get distracted. The good news is that it's never too late to get back on track and redirect our focus back to God. Ang Panginoon ko is a God of chances. So, once we realize na, Lord, nagkamali po ako ulit, ang lagi nating uh, resort, response is to pray, to ask for forgiveness. 
and the Lord will freely forgive us. His grace is never ending. New every morning. Kinahatabo natin yan, di ba? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Yun po ang pinangahawak natin sa Panginoon. Na sa kahinaan natin, andun pa rin ang Lord na hindi tayo hihiman. So in our, in our spiritual journey, we will really encounter bumpy road, a rough road, rough road, at mapamamisa na stumble tayo dahil sa mga batong yun. But the Lord is always there. Get back up. The Lord will gladly reach out His merciful hand for us. Amen. Lagi po may chance sa Panginoon hanggang andito po po ang grace na. Habang hindi po po dumadating ang Panginoon, bumalik na tayo sa Panginoon. Mag-dedicate po tayo ng buhay natin sa Panginoon hanggang binibigyan pa na tayo ng pagkakataon habang hindi pa po siya dumadating. This is the time for us to really focus on the Lord and serve Him. So I will leave you with these two Bible verses about overcoming distractions. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in this evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And from 1 John 5, verse 21, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Because ang priority po natin ay ang Panginoon naman. Pag doon po tayo nakatoon, doon tayo nakafocus, hindi po tayo nabibistract. It's knowing and loving the Lord. Yun po ang maging priority natin as we walk in this world. So I have a few questions here which you can reflect on. Thoughts to ponder. First, what is the focus of your thoughts? Do you tend to dwell more on your problems, your plans, your pleasures, than on the Lord and His Word? So, tanongin po natin yung mga sarili natin. To how does the focus of your thoughts affect your emotions and attitudes? What effect does it have on your own faith? Third, how much time on any given day do you set aside to be alone with the Lord? Listening to Him through His Word. Ayun po yung mga tanong na pwede natin pagbulay-bulayan every moment. So what should be our response? First, focus in on your Godly vision. Godly vision. Hindi lang mo ang vision ko na self-centered. Should be Godly. Focus tayo mo. Pangalawa, pursue that call on your life. Saan ka ba tinawag ng Panginoon? Ano ba yung plano sa inyo, Lord? Marami po nagtatanong, What is God's will for me? Tinatanong nyo rin po ba yan sa sarili mo? What is God's will in my life? Ang sagot lang po doon is maging busy po tayo sa pag-inigod sa Panginoon. If we remain serving the Lord, we continue to pray while serving the Lord. We continue to be thankful sa Kanya. Definitely po, the Lord will lead us kung ano yung atubunan sa kalooban niya. The Lord will direct our steps into knowing what that will is for us. Amen? Maririnig po natin ang Panginoon. Definitely. If we devote ourselves into serving Him and gladly worshiping Him, praising Him, being His friend, maririnig po natin ang Panginoon. Kasi nag-spend tayo ng time eh, together with Him. How can you hear Him when you're full of noise around you? The Holy Spirit is very gentle. 
He speaks to us in a very, very gentle and personal way. So, kailangan ko, yung approach natin, personal din kailangan. At pangatlo po, Envy, the Jewels FM Church. Let's move towards that place of obedience and ministry that the Lord has called us to do as a church. So, yun po yung naging response natin, yung tatlong yun. At tayo, bilang iglesia ng Panginoon, tinawag po tayo. Sama-sama, maglilikod, serving together, growing together, para po sa Panginoon. And so in summary, we all meditate on something. Lagi po tayo nag-iisip. Diba? Minsan-minsan wala ko rin talaga yung isip isip-isip. Minsan malalim. Pag may problema, mayroon tayong inaalala. Nag-iisip po tayo. The issue is whether we will choose to dwell on God's Word, which is healthy and spiritually uplifting, or focus on ourselves, our fears, or worldly desires. God's blessings await us when we make Him our priority. But if we leave Him out, painful consequences are sure to follow. Life is a race. Ask yourselves, the promised land or the wilderness stands before us. What we choose to dwell upon will determine which way we will go. Ito ang salita ng Panginoon. Maganda ko mga kapusin. Thank you.